A finite state machine can be defined without an output function. And in this case, we call this a semi-automaton or a transition system. So it just transits between uh, the states. And what is significant in this case is in which state you are after, let's say, a specific input stream. Um, in this case, if, if the, uh, the, the set of uh, symbols is consisting of zero or one or equivalent, it doesn't have to be zero or one. It, it, you can use any, any binary, let's say, um, symbolism to represent uh, this set. We call this a finite automaton. Now, this is the, this is the single uh, uh, word, the automaton. The, uh, the plural is automata, so you, you usually hear finite automata. Um, or sometimes we call this an acceptor or a detector or a recognizer. So essentially what happens is you have a sequence of symbols consisting of um, two symbols, okay? And typically we will use zero and one, but doesn't have to be in a general sense. And some of the states are going to be accepting states and some of them are not going to be. So an accepting state means the string you have input up to that point is accepted or recognized by the finite automata. Um, so this is, well, this, this is a recognition process or an acceptance, or you can generalize this to, to more than two symbols. Um, so uh, essentially th this is a classification. Do you recognize the input or not? But if you increase the, the, the number of symbols, more than two, then this is called a classifier. So it actually classifies the input string into one of the predefined classes. Um, in general, in, in this course, we are going to focus on finite automaton and finite automata and not classifiers. Therefore, we are mainly uh, going to use accepting states and non-accepting states. So here you see um, two examples to finite automata and for instance uh, let's consider the the strings um, 0 1 0 1 0 uh, or 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 or 1 0 0 0 1 0 uh, and let's see whether these strings are recognized or accepted by these automata. Um, if you take this one and let's apply this to, to the automata, uh, automaton on the left, uh, you see this is the initial state. So I start at S0 and my first symbol is zero. So zero is going to take me to S1 from S0. Okay, so here we do not have any output. We just have state transitions. Then the next symbol is one, which keeps the state at S1. Then I have a zero, which takes me to S2. Then I have a one, which keeps me in S2. And finally, I have a zero, which brings me to S3. And S3 is an accepting state as signified by the double circle. Therefore, this string 01010 is recognized or accepted by this finite automaton. How about the one on the right hand side? So 01010, 01010. I start from S0 in this state. So the first input is zero, so I, I stay here. Then a one takes me to S1. And with a zero, I stay here. With another one, I go back to S0. And another zero keeps me at S0. And since S0 is an accepting state, the string 01010 is also accepted by this second automaton. Let's look at uh, the others. 
110011. So starting from S0, one here, another one, I'm still at S0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1 keeps me at S3. So this string is also accepted by the left hand side automata. How about the right hand side? Okay, so um, one, another one, zero, zero, another zero, and then one, another one. You are still at S0, so this is also recognized by the automata on the right hand side. And finally, let's look at this one. Um, in fact, let me put another one here. So one, zero, 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 one, zero, one. So start from S0, uh, one keeps me at S0, another zero, 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 one, also zero, also one, keeps me at S3. So this is recognized by the, the automata, automaton on the left-hand side. Uh, let's look at the one on the right-hand side. Uh, one takes me to S1 from the initial state S0. Then I have three zeros, so I stay here, zero, 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 still at S1. And then another one takes me back to S0. Another zero keeps me at S0. And this final one takes me to S1, which is not an accepting state. Therefore, this string, 1000101, is not accepted by the automaton on the right-hand side. So this is how finite automaton uh, work as language acceptors. So language recognition uh, is quite important uh, in the context of classification of formal languages. And uh, we, we have to make a few definitions here to formalize this process. We call um, a, a non-empty and finite set of elements called symbols an alphabet is simply a set consisting of some symbols. Essentially, it needs to be non-empty, so you need to have at least one symbol. And furthermore, it, 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 it must be a finite set. It, it can't be an infinite set, uh, whether countable or not. It, it can't be an infinite set. It's a finite set. So we call this an alphabet. Um, a word, or depending on the context, a sentence, over this alphabet V is a string of finite length of elements of B. Again, finite is of significance. Okay, so the, the words should be of finite length. Uh, on the other hand, they can have a, a length of zero. So the empty string or the null string, which we do not by lambda, um, consists of no symbols. Okay, in some texts, you can see this instead of lambda, you can see epsilon or, or this to represent the empty, empty string, but the, the concept is the same. It's a string of no symbols of length zero. And the set of all words possible over the alphabet V is denoted by V star. And we, we call this the clean closure. So this is the, the, the clean star operator. And essentially, it's defined as the set of all possible strings uh, that can be obtained by concatenation using the symbols in this alphabet. So for instance, um, the, the clean closure of the set consisting of just the symbol 1 is, uh, is a set consisting of the empty string 1, 1, 1, one, 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 and so on. All possible strings that we can construct using the symbol one. And this always includes the empty string. Or this one, for instance, the, the clean closure of uh, zero, one. You have the empty string. You have zero, one, the singletons. And zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, the strings of length two. And then you have the strings of length three. And then you'll have the strings of length four and so forth. Or for instance, one of your symbols can be zero and the other zero one. Now zero one 
you have to treat this as a symbol by itself and not um, a string. But um, in a general sense, you can also see this as a string. So zero and zero one, and this, uh, the clean closure of this set will be the empty string, zero, zero one. You do not have one by itself because it's not in the original set. And then you have zero, zero, which consists of two zeros. And then you have zero, zero, one. Now, this is not the concatenation of a zero and another zero and another one. No, because one is not amongst the symbols. This is the concatenation of zero and zero, one. Sim uh, similarly, you have zero, one, zero. You have zero, one, zero, one. You have zero, 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 concatenation of three zeros. Zero, 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 one. Again, you have three symbols here. Now, zero, zero, one, and then zero, etc. You get the idea. Now, what's the language when we say um, a formal language in, in the context of theory of computation? We mean um, a subset of the clean star closure. Okay, you have an alphabet V, you have a set of symbols, and you take its clean closure. That is the set of all possible strings uh, obtained through concatenation using those symbols. And um, any language defined on this alphabet is essentially a subset of V star. And a string X is said to be recognized or accepted by a finite automaton if it takes the initial state to an accepting state as we have seen earlier. And finally, we, we say that two finite automata are called equivalent if they recognize the same language. So uh, what, what, what does this mean? You have, um, is if you say, if you, if you have a finite automaton, um, you can define the set of strings that can be recognized by this automaton. Okay, so there's a certain set uh, this, this finite automaton can recognize. And if you have two automata, and if the set of strings that are recognized by these two automata are the same sets, then we say that these two automata are equivalent. Now, um, we are not going to see many examples, but if you actually uh, look up some examples, you, you will see that um, there are uh, usually multiple ways to actually define um, uh, finite or to design finite automata that recognizes a certain given set. So uh, this is how we define equivalence between two different finite automata.